Django Unchained is a film that is written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. It stars Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kerry Washington, and Samuel L. Jackson. So, quite the star-studded cast here. Django Unchained is about a young slave named Django who is met by Dr. King Schultz. Dr. Schultz buys Django's freedom, and Django becomes a bounty hunter alongside of him. After the two get to know each other and become properly acquainted, they both set out to find and free Django's wife, Broomhilda, who is a slave on Calvin Candy's plantation in Mississippi. Before I go any further in this review, I wanted to tell you how I watched Django Unchained. I watched Django Unchained through a streaming service called VidAngel. VidAngel is a streaming service where you can connect your accounts from Netflix, Amazon Prime, Amazon HBO, Amazon Stars, and Amazon CBS All Access, and you can filter movies and TV shows. You can take out things like profanity, sexual references, sexual scenes, and even violence if you want to. Now let's get back to the review of Django Unchained. I want to start with the very, very opening credit scene of this movie. This is something that Tarantino really does well and he really thrives with this, is he has a really great opening scene or a really great opening credit scene. And it is very rare that I would watch a movie and hear a song and see the credits that are going by and I will feel really excited and amped about what I'm getting ready to see. This movie, I every time I hear the song Django and then I see these big bold red letters that pop up on screen and then I see Jamie Foxx and a bunch of other slaves walking without their shirts on and it's hot and then at the end of the scene it's really cold and they're all shivering in blankets it just looks brutal I get so excited about what's getting ready to happen in this movie it's a great opening credit scene after a really great opening credit scene we get introduced to the character of Dr. King Schultz who's played by Christoph Waltz excellently I might add. He is fantastic in this role. You can tell that he's having a ton of fun with it. Uh, he's charming. He's nice. He's really lovable. Uh, he's a bounty hunter, so he has a little bit of a violent side. He doesn't really look like a bounty hunter at first, and that first opening scene where he kills those two guys really kind of like jarred me <laughs> the first time I saw it. It didn't jar me too much because I knew it's a Tarantino movie. I'm there. I'm, in, I'm expecting some kind of violence. But uh, it still it did shock me a little bit when I saw that because I knew nothing coming into this movie the first time I watched it. But I love Christoph Waltz and how he, he gives his character life. I love the scene of where he's sitting with Django at the bar when he's waiting for the sheriff to come so he can kill him and then he gets the marshal and I just love that line of him looking he says you know in other words marshal you owe me two hundred dollars I just really love like, that scene and how he delivers that line while we're on Christoph Waltz's performance in this I thought I'd talk about Jamie Foxx's performance as well I feel like Jamie Foxx in this performance is so good that he kind of just disappears into this role it always surprises me when actors who are known for doing comedic roles will step into something serious and do really well with it. When I think of people who are specifically known for their more comedic roles in movies or like for doing stand-up or something like that, I always think of three people. I think of Jim Carrey, uh, I think of Adam Sandler who has had just a, just a few roles, enough to kind of dip his feet in to show you, yeah, I can do pretty well with a serious role. And I think of Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has done a really, like, a lot of stuff that has been really good. He did really well in Ray. Uh, he won an Oscar for that. And he did really well in this movie, too. I was really blown away at how great he was. Samuel L. Jackson has a really fun character in this movie. Uh, he's just like you know, this old dude that's lived on this plantation for a long time. He can say some things that some of the other slaves might not be able to say. He gets along with the master pretty well. And uh, he's just a really fun character to watch. I feel like Samuel L. Jackson really brings him to life very well. Carrie Washington, as Django's wife, does a really great job in this performance as well. She, she, I thought she did a really great job, especially in the scenes where she's being whipped. And she really has to give this emotion of, man, I'm in, I'm in pain. Not just physically, but also emotionally at the, just the beatdown that these people are giving me. Really solid performance by her. And in my opinion, I saved the best performance of this movie for last. I really loved Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie. He is an excellent, excellent villain. I think this is one of the best roles that I've ever seen Leonardo DiCaprio in. He is so despicable and wicked and just this really, really bad guy. <laughs> As an actor, 
if you're playing a villain that is meant to be hated and I as an audience member can watch a movie and at the end of it really hate your character because of how evil he is or she is or whatever you did an excellent job as an actor Leonardo DiCaprio knocks this out of the park and in my mind when I think of like really hated people that I just hate because of how evil they are in cinema history I think of Percy Whitmore from the Green Mile for a really long time I, I've always felt like he is the most hated dude that I personally hate in cinema history. He's just evil. All throughout that movie, he just, every time I watch it, he makes me like him less and less and less. And in this movie, after I watched it, I feel like the character of Calvin Candy is like right up there <laughs> with Percy Whitmore and may even be a little bit higher on like the hatred scale for me. Leonardo DiCaprio... He did an excellent job with this. There's there's just no way around it. Moving away from the acting, getting on to the actual filmmaking of this movie, I wanted to talk about one aspect, and that was the cinematography, mainly, mainly how they used color with other colors. And what I'm thinking of in my mind is the scenes where blood goes on white, like red on white that in like those slow-mo shots or just in those really close-up shots I really love that it just really captures uh, what's going on in the moment in a really beautiful way even though it's something that is kind of like bad that's going on somebody's dying somebody's getting shot but it's a beautiful way that they capture it another thing with the cinematography that I really love and I'll get into in a little bit is the cheesy like zoom ins on people's faces that they do Tarantino really knows his movies but he also really knows his westerns and specifically those like spaghetti westerns and really cheesy westerns from uh, the 50s and 60s and he really brings in uh, like some recreations of uh, <laughs> those really cheesy like zoom ins on people's faces and stuff like that and sometimes I I see that in the movie and I laugh at how funny it is but it really I think brings and adds an element to this movie that works for what it's trying to go for and in any other movie I feel like it, that would just be like silly and people would not care about it just but because Tarantino does it it's just like oh yeah it's Tarantino we'll let it slide and it looks cool Tarantino really likes to throw in comedic moments in his movies and a really big comedic moment that really got me the first time I watched this and really every time that I watched this is the KKK raid scene where they can't they can't like see out of their masks just thinking about one of the guys like wife how she worked so hard to get these masks together and they're all complaining about how you know well if I would have known I just had to cut an eye hole in the bag like I could have done it way better than your wife could have done it like they're all going back and forth they're talking about how they can't see out of the masks so are they gonna do the raid without masks or with masks and it's just a really fun kind of poking fun at the KKK even though it's a serious topic I wanted to tackle the violence as well in this movie I'm normally a person who can handle violence in movies especially Tarantino violence which is known for to be like the next level violence but I think something Tarantino really does well in this movie as a director and as a writer is that he really draws you into the seriousness of something that really happened back in the 1800s and why the Civil War was fought in the first place. Um, he really shows you the seriousness of everything going on and he really gives you a couple heartbreaking moments. Even though we don't really know these characters, we can still feel the weight of the issue that he's talking about. And I'm thinking mainly of the scene where it's the two men fighting where Calvin Candy's introduced and then later on when the the guy's getting ripped apart by a dog um those are heartbreaking moments those are just like rough moments that really they're hard to watch when you when you watch them it's kind of like oh man I don't really know if I can keep my eyes on this because of how horrifying the thought of this actually happening is and this stuff really could have happened and it probably did so I really love what Tarantino's doing here with bringing you into the story and really showing you the seriousness of what 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 was happening in our country just a, like a couple hundred years ago. Something Tarantino also really does well in this movie is the use of the wardrobe. 
I mainly think of uh, <laughs> of Django in that one scene where he's like got that blue suit on uh, I don't really know what to call it but it's like a blue suit and it's got like white around the edges and that like just close-up shot of him he just looks so cool in that uh, I love the music in this as well the music just really goes along so well in this movie I I'm a huge sucker for a, like a really good soundtrack to a movie and uh, this one just it floored me at how great it was. I also wanted to mention just how, again, how cheesy and like over the top this movie is. Um, I feel like a lot of Tarantino movies are this way. This one is probably the most cheesy and over the top compared to all the other Tarantino movies that I've personally have seen. And it just works. Like, like I was saying earlier, I mean, there's just something about Tarantino as a director that if anyone else did this, people wouldn't like it. I know they wouldn't, but it's because Tarantino does it. It just looks good and people give him credit for it because he, he's the one who really utilizes and executes this really well. Something that is really cheesy and over the top in this movie is the ending. The ending is really well done uh, with, you know, with this like Django and this, this house blows up. And then as soon as it blows up, he turns around and gives this big cheesy grin like with his cigar and like or cigarette or whatever. And then like his glasses and his hat. He looks like really cool, but it's just everything about it is so cheesy and over the top. But it brings a smile to my face and uh, I, I can't help but like it. My one gripe that I have with this movie is that like Django just is this super great gunslinger and has had no training whatsoever. I mean, I understand that to have this story, you need a guy who is good at gunslinging and Django's the dude for this. But I mean, he's a slave. Chances are he's probably never touched a gun in his life. And you're just expecting me to, to just allow this man <laughs> to like kill it like snipe a dude from a long ways away like that's the first sign we get of him like killing someone and i i tried like i when i rewatched this i tried to find evidence for like how they proved that because i know he trains later on like towards like the middle or so of the film he trains and becomes a good sl gunslinger but even before that, he's like, he's killing dudes and everything. And this is the one line I could find that like kind of somewhat explains why he's such a good gunslinger. The kid's a natural. Mm, I don't know if I buy that. I know it's supposed to be like really like silly and in a way and then like over the top and, and just cheesy but I just I don't I don't really buy that reasoning I'm willing to let that slide though kind of sort of and I'm gonna give it a pretty good review I'm gonna give this movie Django Unchained in my mind gets 4.8 stars um, I've seen I know that's kind of like a strange uh, way to rate it but it makes sense in my mind um, but 4.8 stars is what I'm gonna give it in my mind, it ranks pretty high up there for me with Tarantino movies. I feel like this is one that's a little bit lower on people's lists of like Tarantino movies. But for me, this is definitely number three. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, I'll give number two. And uh, Pulp Fiction's got to go at number one. That's going to do it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw here, subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted, which will be weekly. And like, comment all that jazz. Thanks again for watching and the review is now concluded.